Don't forget, come see us January 4th through the 6th at Wizard World New Orleans, where we'll have plenty of our DVDs, plus be doing panels as well. And if you use the promo code CINEMA20, you'll get 20% off your tickets by visiting wizardworld.com. So far on this show, we've sat through the magic of a talking cat and a Halloween puppy. So naturally, from director David Dakota, we also have a Christmas puppy. Kinda. Sorta. Not really. I know of one movie that's gonna get a lump of petrified shit this holiday season, due largely in part to this box cover and title being a fucking lie! A Christmas Puppy is about a Christmas spirit who visits a spoiled teenager and gets him to help out the family of another spoiled teenager. Yay, the front gate of their mansion finally works again. A Christmas miracle. Notice that has nothing to do with a fucking Christmas Puppy. Oh, there is a dog in it. And while I'm used to the animal on the box of a David Dakota movie not being the one in the actual movie, at least a talking cat is actually about a talking cat. And when you Google Christmas puppy in scarf, you'll notice that there's a similar dog with a different scarf. <laughs> that means uh, nothing, really. The movie makes more sense when you find out that it's more commonly called Christmas Spirit, but given that that's a very generic title for a very generic plot, they retitled it A Christmas Puppy to bring in fans of bad cinema and to make a puppy for Christmas look like old Yeller. I expect better from Fant Forstick films. Mm, or not. This is Los Angeles, city of angels. And it's Christmas time, in case that was unclear. <laughs> I'm too grumpy for this shit, despite the tag on my Christmas onesie saying that I'm from Santa. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'm from the Island of Misfit Critics. This seems like the kind of movie that would open with random shots of other houses in the director's neighborhood. Our lead is Riley, whose mother, Maureen McCormick, is just getting over her horror of being part of another holiday movie spawned from hell. Oh, and I think she was in some old sitcom, too. She's either got a tiny tree or she's gigantic! Mom and son have it out in the empty room with a trampoline nailed to the wall with some lights. Things are bad in the life of Riley. So all those hours for Christmas are to transition operations into shutting computer services down. I'm out of a job. <laughs> it's okay, we don't have much furniture anyway. The magic is... it's dead. Hey, don't say that. Well, it's true, Mom. I've been alone for more holidays than I've been alive. He was also alone for holidays that happened before he was born. Makes sense. And with, um, sexual tension. On the day, we'll go grab waffles like every other Saturday. <laughs> How did you get to be so grown up? Science. Are they having an affair? Something is up with Mom. Wow, I stopped believing the magic when you tried to beat up that mall Santa. <laughs> Mom got drunk and beat up a mall Santa. <laughs> At least that's what I'm assuming. I'm gonna need more context for that line and stop flirting. Yeah, well, I like the hot cocoa afterwards at the coffee shop way better anyways. Mm, marshmallows. Marshmallows make Eric Lang good. They do. <laughs> Seriously, are they gonna fuck? Well, that scene was so long that Christmas is already over. Unfortunately, he gave up trying to communicate with his brother in the Upside Down and decided to crash. Big mistake. Did you read all these books? Mm, need more context! Oh, sorry, Lisa. You want the weird science sitcom. That's blocks away. Side note, I actually wrote that joke before I realized that that actually is Vanessa Angel from the Weird Science series. This is Hope. She's the ghost of Christmas Skinamax. My sisters and I are Christmas spirits. Faith, mercy, charity, me. We go around and try to restore people's belief in the magic of Christmas. God, the Wrinkle in Time movie sucks. 
She visits Riley because he declared that magic is dead. So let's embarrass the hell out of him. Ah! Shh, don't wake your mother. You're Santa's boy toy now, Riley. Now lube up your ass with some icing. She wants Riley to spread the joy of Christmas to others, which she says repeatedly and with props. What does that mean? A fortune cookie. What? It means you're a prince and can marry Princess Vespa. You will discover the spirit of Christmas and give it to someone else. She literally just said that and took several minutes doing so. Why did she have to say it again with a fortune cookie? The scene goes on so long that it has a costume change. She still believes in the spirit of Christmas, but she needs you to believe it as well. To do that, you have to help someone you don't know find it too. This is the third time you've said this. Why is it the studio called the First Draft Productions? And then God woke up bright and early and is shocked to find the terror that he missed in the middle of the night. Eh, this all appears normal. Uh... Did you get a job at the mall? Um, yeah. Yeah, I applied. Yes, at 2 a.m. after you last saw him, he went to the mall and got a job. I need this universe explained to me. So Riley trusted Hope, the Christmas spirit, his imagination, and his own spirit of adventure, and found himself in Malibu, a sun-dappled stretch of picturesque coastline. Who is talking? Now he goes to find Christmas joy at a house where it totally looks like they're suffering this season. Wait, they do need some holiday spirit. This is the house they shot a talking cat in. It's a house of horrors. This is the home of Tom and Winnie Sims, their daughter Allison, and their faithful dog, Chompy. No, it isn't. It's the director's house. Nice family picture featuring Alexandra Paul moments after snorting pure Christmas snow. She plays a children's book writer who has writer's block. Mmm, true suffering. Her husband, Tom, is a bore, and her daughter, Allison's biggest problem is that she has a crush on the world's worst prankster. You're supposed to use toilet paper, you idiot. Anyway, her mom is Frangela Lansbury, and sad news, the insert shots are going through foreclosure. Sucks about your writer's block, honey. I gotta go, because I think my son, Joel, is having hookers at the house again. Riley's caught trespassing in their backyard, so of course she invites him in for help. Hmm, what do I get for the family who has everything? I know the other half of this car! Or more padding. Oh shit, is this Christmas? Things just haven't been the same since her first husband, Joe Friday, was killed by chili dog poisoning. Well, their tree works, so my job is done now. Okay, job well done. Christmas tree is trimmed, and Mom had a nice memory. Christmas spirit is solved. And thus, all suffering has ended. Uh-oh, not so fast. There's way more minor chores he can do. The real magic of Christmas is trying to convince me that these two are in the same place at the same time. Guess I need to stick around longer. An angel told me to bang your lonely daughter. Don't worry, Mom says I'm great in the sack. But they bond over her most popular book. It's such a timeless classic for something that's just an instruction manual they typed some words on. Well, well, well. Once again, I've caught you in your office seducing another pool boy. His mom read him The Littlest Werewolf when he was a kid, and now he wants to be a writer. Oh, that, that's, that's great. Hmm, the ghost of Christmas. Fuck off, I'm hungover. Where's that no good daughter of mine? Look, kid, I need you to get off your ass. Your mother and I lost our passion when we stopped reminiscing about both of us being in Baywatch. Allie, come on. This isn't easy on me either. The company's shutting down. I have to go through their books. I've heard the song. Please skip ahead. I spent all night coming up with that. Now buy me another bear. And now a reading from the book of Cuckoo's Nest. It, the two of you are summoning sexy Buzz Killington. Yes, Riley's quite the pea, isn't he? 
We all know how I like my peas. Mushed. And she spent the previous night coming up with that one. She hasn't slept in weeks. She thinks Riley is there just as a prank from some unseen girl at her school and as punishment for him tricking her. You're gonna pretend to be my boyfriend and help me drive my parents crazy. Now do me in the half car, you know, as punishment. Ever since Christine, Alexandra Paul likes keeping random car parts in her house. That way it warns other cars not to fuck with her again. Oh, wait, I think Riley's punishment is actually that he has to see more of these effects. There was no reason that that happened. There seems to be such passion in this household. They're cursed with boredom. Sweetheart, has the gate been giving you trouble? I can't get it open. Oh, no, but Riley, he couldn't get in. He had to jump the back fence. Yeah, because the, the gate's not working. Exactly. Well, that seems normal. Go on making dinner with my wife. Careful, though. Josephine Gordon-Levitt is nearby. Knock yourself out. Hi, sweetie. What is Riley going to do? I don't think that he should be doing anything to help anyone. This girl would hate fuck air. But thank God Riley is here since he helps them with their gate remote. A true hero. This calls for comedy. Why would Southern California to rain? Oh, oh, ooh! A Christmas puppy. I'm glad the angel could step in and help this down on their luck family fix their gate. This movie feels like if the E! Network controlled Christmas and made every predicament just as shallow. Allison, you know we can't afford a big Christmas this year. I understand you two are both too wrapped up in yourselves to care about Grandma. Yes, it's the parents who are wrapped up in themselves. Who does that? Who takes Christmas off? That's totally stupid. But I'm glad we're doing it because you'd make sure this Christmas stinks anyway. Is it too late in the game to drop her off at an orphanage? She even stole Riley's phone earlier, which he gets back from this totally a teen girl's bedroom. Just an old TV on an empty dresser, that's all she needs. This room is as empty as the dialogue. For someone who said the Christmas spirit's magic was dead, you sure are doing a lot of abracadabra. Yeah, well, you're weird. This movie is 90 minutes long. I see nothing that could have been chopped out. All of this seems so necessary. Oh, hey. Hope you like frozen stuff. Let's we'll see what you have. Frozen stuff. <laughs> I gotta go help with dinner. I hope you like frozen food. <laughs> You've got a lot of frozen stuff. Oh, are we having frozen food? Sorry, I'm holding out for cheese puffs. I haven't seen such an inspirational tale since my fan fiction of Oliver Twist, where Oliver has parents, is super rich, and just has a few minor headaches. Move over, homeless kids. My grandma makes the best sugar cookies with cinnamon and nutmeg. We were even on a cruise once, and she had the captain open up the kitchen so she could make it for us. Uh, this place is such a hellhole. It's the Hotel Rwanda of Beverly Hills. Now they are cursed with making dinner. <laughs> I would help make dinner. Me and Riley. She's gonna poison us again. <laughs> Seriously. So what are we making? Stew, apparently. And trouble. Ooh, she's gonna fuck that stew. Or just put a bunch of spicy shit in it. Ha ha ha! I am trouble! Why is this happening? What does what burning your parents' faces off have to do with your grandma? <laughs> That's a sentence. Oh, it's because it turns out she's actually a criminal. Well, after the eBay incident, my file has been flagged. I'm being tracked 24-7. You have a file? And then he teaches her the Christmas spirit by getting her her eBay account back and clearing her record. But not before they try to kill Dad. Oh, well, be careful, okay? Because you know how your dad reacts to spicy food. He sneezes and hiccups, and let me tell you, it ain't pretty. Yeah, survivors of the One Chip Challenge can tell you that if all you do is hiccup and sneeze, you've gotten off easy. What a Christmas feast. A pot of stew and some biscuits. 
This calls for a speech as passionate as the dinner. I'd like to say a couple things. Um, I'm just really glad that everything that happened today happened. I've never seen someone whose acting could be described as going half sorbo. Oh, and what a shock, something was done to the food. <coughs> What? This is on you for letting Lizzie boredom cook. Oh my god, this really is spicy. Huh? Here's a thought. Maybe don't have all this spicy shit in your house if none of you can eat it. Anyway, I'm glad you're back to give me a pep talk, but I really need to use the toilet. Major Christmas fire hole. Yeah, but she's gonna think I'm crazy. <laughs> the truth often is. <sighs> Oh, and Hope needs Riley to get her more transition effects since they ran out. Time to call Grandma and get her here for the holidays! Is that my son-in-law, Tom? Um, yeah, it is, ma'am. Somebody give him something spicy to eat? <laughs> yeah. How often does this happen? I give my chili an extra kick sometimes, makes him turn the most marvelous shade of vermilion. Why do you all keep torturing this man with spicy food? Surely Riley's story will make him sound crazy, right? <laughs> he better not tell anyone. Oh, uh, a Christmas spirit named Hope came into my bedroom and told me to bring the magic of Christmas to your family. I'm listening, Riley. Go on. That's how people work. Hello, folks. God here again. Can you believe how fucking stupid these people are? And everyone is happy in the morning, and now the movie can end. Thanks for letting me crash here last night. <laughs> That's pretty weird when you think about it, though. Now let's put a ghost pepper in Dad's coffee. But the real horrors of Christmas have truly begun. Where's my mouth? Thank God Riley is here to help with another tragedy. Mr. Sniffles? This is the worst day since they lost their TV remote for five minutes. Maybe Riley stole their things. Ah, that can't be. They've known him for hours. I might have had him use Dad's credit card. What? what? No, I didn't. I didn't. I swear. Um, I worked it all out with Grandma Betty. You talked to my mother? Where's our stuff? Uh, now look, you stop it, young lady, okay? You're in enough trouble already. Riley, I think it's best if you go. If you string a bunch of sentences together, then it magically becomes a scene. <laughs> Not really. Forget them, I got my effects back. You're the best, Riley. Riley then leaves because I guess it is weird that a stranger has been in their house for so long, but he leaves them with a guest appearance. I'm not Hi, that. it's your grandma Betty. Hi, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when Riley told me that his spirit wanted him to save your Christmas. Why did you kick him out? If Alexandra Paul tries hard enough, she can possibly make her mother spontaneously combust. These scenes are just lines put into a blender and they're speaking the results. Riley did nothing except to tell an old lady that her family loves her very much, but they were oblivious to the notion that she might want to come and visit and actually pay her own way, even if there wasn't some big crazy shindig going on. What is happening? Where's the narrator when I need them? And where's the talking puppy I was promised? Uh, oh, it's gonna be the fucking narrator. Ah, oh, here's all the missing stuff. Our dog Chompy took them. You know, the character that was only in two insert shots and is not a puppy. Now they search everywhere for the dog. <laughs> the title character. Oh, damn, and I thought for sure the dog would be in the silverware drawer. It's even stupid where their stuff is found. Tom, the fire pit. Chompy loves to sleep by the fire pit. Stupid dog always catching itself on fire. Now that we have our stuff back, we should probably teach the dog to stay away from the fire pit. 
Glad you're all happy, but you still don't know where the dog is. Oh, never mind. I'm your love interest who has been in this movie as much as the dog has. But you know, that that's, uh, that's really cool that you like Christmas. I love Christmas. I love Christmas, too. <sighs> yeah, he's into you as much as Sebastian was into Jenna's sexy Santa outfit. Oh boy, everything's coming up me! What? What? I can't hear what you're no. saying! No group hug! Yes, group oh, hug! Oh, we have to call yes. us because we have dinner then! Where's your fucking dog? Oh, there's the dog right in front of us in his bed where he hasn't moved the entire movie. Anyway, Tom makes a phone call and saves Riley's mom's job. Good thing the dog was there. And the grandma too, who's also shot separately from the other actors. Sorry, we're late for dinner. We spent two hours looking for a jacket for Riley, and then we just gave up. So, Riley, how do you know The Sims? Well, I created them, and now I'm gonna drown them in a pool when I take the ladder out. This movie is so bad that the moon used the sun as its double. The important thing is that someone believes Riley. My husband Lawrence passed away a few years back, and he was the love of my life. I'm sorry to hear about that. But we never would have met if it weren't for a Christmas spirit by the name of Faith. Wait, you saw a Christmas spirit too? I didn't. So in other words, I was really fucking gullible when my husband told me this story too. Then Marcia gets hired to help Alexandra Paul with a toy line based on her series of books. Now I can rest easy this Christmas. But not as easy as Hope, who only had to do several cutaways folding her hands. Thank you. I was just talking with Tom and Winnie, and it seems like they want to start their own belief in hope. Merry Christmas, Sarah and Riley. Redundancy is in this movie more than the dog is. And speaking of... So you may have figured out, I didn't actually steal Christmas. I just helped Hope work her magic a little. And contrary to Tom's lack of pronoun precision, you didn't do jack shit. Too little, too late, Christmas puppy. The movie tries to make it look like the dog was the mastermind behind all of this. Chompy, the dog who stole Christmas, was Winnie's next book, and it was a great success. Yes, a book that was actually about the ghost of a supermodel. Teen boys bought it in bulk. Oh, but it's the gift that keeps on loving. When it finally shows up, it must be true. They put that tagline on here not once, but twice. This movie seriously got Judy Landers to take five minutes and record a handful of lines so they could tack on a talking dog ending. That way they can mismarket the movie. We'll even have her narrate the movie as well. That way, years from now, Love the Coopers can rip off our ending where the twist is also that the talking dog is narrating it. It's really bad when your movie sucks so hard that you can barely get a talking dog to appear in it. Sorry, but my asking price was too high, and all I wanted was a bone made of diamonds. And if that was too much, then a bone made of poop. Unfortunately, there's so many of these movies that when you get just one of them, Santa curses you with a shitload of other talking dog movies. Let me spoil it for you. They're all probably terrible, but on the bright side, at least this movie wasn't about Kirk Cameron drugging and kidnapping children and convincing them that they're dead. Um, how do you feel about Christmas? I hate it. 